So ladies and gentlemen, Quickie Baby just threw out a video that is a little bit disturbing about World of Tanks. Uh, it's called, Will Auto Cannons Rule the World of Tanks? So I put out a video a little bit ago, I think a week and a bit ago, about uh, watching Kem's video about auto cannons possibly going into the game and all kinds of shit changing. And it seems like they've done it. So give his video a quick look. World of Tanks and Wargaming have finally done it. They put auto cannons inside. Yeah, look the at game. that. That's ridiculous. So if you ever wanted to feel like the Terminator, now is your chance on the uh, the test server. This game mode is called Overwhelming Fire. However, I don't think it's just going to be a fun game mode that we're talking about, but uh, I'll highlight that later on in the video. There are three different vehicles that Wargaming are testing in this Overwhelming Fire game mode, and I believe that there are actually going to be eight different uh, vehicles that you can play inside Overwhelming Fire. So it's so weird to play this game mode because like look you've got 20,000 rounds of ammunition 37 millimeters each one dealing four well 400 damage per second with 170 millimeters of pen interestingly enough as well if you look at the premium rounds on this tank they actually do half the damage per second weird to say it like that and there you can see one going off right in front of you with the hailstorm deciding to have a little bit of fun before they get into the combat the penetration significantly increased but it's really weird that wargaming are making the premium rounds on this tank way better uh, with regards to pen but half the damage which you really don't want and what happens when you get going look at you that can see the green bar in the middle of your screen quickly went empty. Then you have to reload for a substantial amount of time. So the it literally just goes brrr, It goes, yeah, I mean... I mean, I, I don't really want to talk there. How ridiculous, ridiculous is that? Now, Wargaming have actually been teasing uh, autocannons inside World of Tanks for uh, the best part of this year. If anyone remembers in a video which I, I titled, I think it was, The Future of World of Tanks, that it actually showed some auto cannon mechanics. And I don't think it was just for a fun game mode. I think that Wargaming are testing the idea of actually having vehicles like this. I'm not sure if it will be an entire tank tree, or maybe it would just be a premium tank. But you can see that it's not all just like hold down your mouse button in close quarters combat. There's actually quite a lot of skill in using uh, these tanks uh, at long range. However, in close quarters, yeah, it's pretty much just like auto aim and brap. I'm sure this isn't yeah, going to work exactly. so well when you're playing against tanks that have really good side armor. You actually have to like aim at weak points and so on and so forth. But for this, I mean... Look at that. Look at that. That's just disgusting. It, that's kind of satisfying, I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure how they're going to work with this tank in the game if they do put this in a random game. Um, they would have to have some sort of cooldown system to go along with the reload system. So like if you fired out half your clip or even a quarter of your clip, uh, your gun overheats. Because actually in real life, if you do use a minigun like that, you can't actually just hold down the gun and just fire. It actually will overheat the barrel and start to warp the actual barrel itself. And your gun will just not work and start blowing up in your face. So that's another thing. That I think the sound effects are really good. I think Wargaming have done a fantastic job with that. But obviously the statistics that you see on a vehicle like this with 3,700 hit points they're clearly just doing this as, as a test for what I honestly think are mechanics that they want to add to World of Tanks. And I think it's quite an intelligent way for Wargaming to test whether this mechanic will A, be enjoyed by the player base, B, does the player base think that it's going to destroy the game, and then... So, I have a feeling that there will be a lot of backlash from this, especially if they put it into random tanks, specifically because... If you look back into the past where they added in um, wheeled vehicles, the wheeled tanks, the EBRs, they made so much noise, such a big backlash, like people were losing their minds. Because even if you shoot off a tire, they, they only lose about 30% of their movement speed. And this wasn't the case when it first came out. When it first came out, they only lost, I think, 10, 10, 10 kilometers off their movement speed. So they were just ripping around killing everybody so it'll be interesting to see for sure see can they manage to actually balance it out so it doesn't destroy the game but it's kind of a fun mechanic do you see how much the reticle blooms out so at long range you can't just hold the mouse down you actually have to fire like buh, 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 buh. so it's it's really it does feel really good and i thoroughly recommend you get onto the test server to be able to uh, try it out so wargaming are trialing try. three different vehicles and each of the different vehicles has very different auto cannon 
and it, it is the most extreme with regards to its first damage and how it feels. And, oh my word. Did I just do 1,200 damage to that thunderclap? Yeah, that was pretty brutal stuff. But as I said, this isn't the, the only way the gun works. Let's take a look at the M5Y version of this vehicle that actually has a cooldown. Take a look at that. He went through 2,424 rounds in that match. Can you imagine how many credits you'll be having to pay if you went through that many rounds? Could you just imagine? It's like it's like playing the Jagdpanzer e, uh, E3, I think. Jagdpan yeah, easy 3 um, at tier 3. It's a broken tank. It was incredibly broken when it came out. It was almost selling for $400 on a, on, in real life money. Um, but even now, when I play it, I end up spending almost 200,000 credits a match because it fires so quickly and each round is worth $400 or 400 credits. So, oh. Feature. Next up, we're going to be playing in the Thunderclap, and the Thunderclap is basically an M5Y, and it has a different functionality with its auto cannon. Interestingly enough, this doesn't seem to be working in the replay, so you're not going to be able to. You're possibly not going to be able to see the the cooldown bar. Actually, I think you will. You're oh, just they're not adding going a cooldown bar. The amount of rounds that you have. Oh, there we go. Okay, I lie. It is actually working, and you see that the Thunderclap. It has a, a heat bar. It's quite a long up. heat bar too. And if you nice. fully heat up the bar, then you actually have to wait until it fully cools down before you're going to be able to use the gun again. And then you can actually see the amount of rounds that you have in the magazine with the green bar in the center of your screen. So this is the way that I thought that the auto That's how cannons all of them should work if they go into the game. All I didn't them. expect it to, them to have like a hailstorm variant where it didn't include a heat bar. It was only just the amount of ammunition. Um, I also, as I said with the hailstorm, thought that you were going to be able to just have all of your ammunition and that it would only have a heat bar. But it's quite interesting that you have a heat bar and you also have to reload the magazine as well. It's kind of like a balancing mechanic for this thing. And look at that. You can see that this one, towards the latter part, it actually gets very inaccurate. But still, I was able to dump in 800. Well, and I... It looks like the heat bar goes up, down at about twice the rate as it does if you go all the way up. Didn't let the heat fully fill up this time. So that means that I can then dump out the rest of my mag. And it looks like this tank has enough to, should we say, fully heat up the barrel. Probably, and you see like, just quickly, look at this burst fire here. You have to kind of like fire them. And it's actually got quite a lot of skill with like mm. knowing how much lead you have to give. A bit like yeah. when you're playing the the Char 75, you know, the tier nine premium light tank, how you it goes boom, boom, boom. And you have to kind of like drag your mouse to be able to give lead. I it's going to be that. a whole yeah. new skill inside World of Tanks. One thing I wanted to test there is, not that I, I forgot what key it is to reload inside the game, but does it automatically start reloading if you fire it out? And yes, yes it does. It would make perfect sense. Good. It's all interesting mechanics. So, as I was saying, what I was unsure about with this vehicle, or all of these auto cannons, as to whether you would just have infinite ammo, you wouldn't have to reload, so to say, but you just had to manage the heat bar, and the heat bar was actually... I noticed that when he was looking at that... Uh... That other M5Y there, it has two barrels on the sides of the turret. I'm guessing that those are to hold the ammo clips and or mag. I guess it would be. Anyways, it was holding the barrels. I, I noticed that they were also. Uh, they're probably a weak point, I would imagine, maybe adding an extra weak point to the sides of the tank. The, uh, the interesting. damage potential of the tank. So it's interesting that Wargaming are clearly testing out three different, and I wanted to not do another test here, where I decided to burn the gun, so to say, and then see, can you still reload the gun while it's overheated? And yes, you can. You can see I'm reloading an entire magazine. You can see the progress bar just there, where the ammo indicator is slowly filling up. So you can actually reload while you're overheating. So what that means is that if you're close to needing to reload, you might as well overheat the gun, Seems like the reload speed is almost the exact same as the cooldown speed. And then reload after it's not that. Bad. So it's a really interesting mechanic. I really like this. I think this is really fun. That's surprising. I think it adds me. something to the game. And sure, there's going to be like a little bit of silliness. But as, as long as Wargaming get the statistics right, I don't think it's going to be anything outrageous. The only way, the only problems that I perceive with this game mode is what happens with crits. Mm -hmm. Clearly, um, on the test server. 
you're already only allowed to bring in three pieces of equipment extra on top. So like a repair kit, a fire extinguisher, and your uh, first aid kit. So you'll basically have to carry around two first aid kits or you're kind of screwed, which means that you're giving away 15,000 credits at the end of every game if you only use them once. Um, so this will be a, these tanks will be a real credit burner if they put them into the game. But all there is is a repair kit. There's no med kit, so your crew can't get damaged. But can you imagine how many crits this would do to a tank? Yeah. If you were able to just go fully unload on it. Yeah. So are these tanks going to be unbalanced from that perspective? Yes. Well, as long as Wargaming <laughs> actually consider these things and they, they realize, unlike they did with Crew 2.0, that having a large amount of internal crits doesn't make the game very fun. But you see how you have to fire? It's actually not very good at long range. Much worse than a regular gun at long range with having to go pa 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 pa. It's really not a lot of damage. I only did 29 or maybe like 200 to that hailstorm with that fire. But I did 500 to the flak mouse in close quarters combat. Interestingly enough, the flak mouse doesn't have very good turret armor on the test server at all. And that's where you're not meant to shoot it. Um, and on this tank, the Thunderclap, if you do go on the <laughs> test server, one of my hints is that this actually counts as a, a model to the ah, left and the right. Great. So that's got absolutely awful armor. So it's one of the weaknesses of a Thunderclap Indication. is to shoot to the left and to the right and actually shoot the, uh, the magazine, <clears throat> I guess, where the, the rounds are loaded. So personally for me, I think the Thunderclap mechanic is much more interesting than it was on the Hailstorm. The Hailstorm felt like it was just a little bit stupid. And you can see that now this is the first game I played, but I'm already getting good enough to l stop firing just as I'm about to um, yeah. just as I'm about to overheat and then to let my gun cool down a little bit. It's really interesting yeah, that the way that the gun goes blooms quick. out. And one interesting mechanic I think that Wargaming could make as well is maybe the bloom should be more, depending on how hot the gun is. I'm not sure if that's uh, historical. I agree. Uh, or like, should I say, from like a reality perspective. 100% agree. Or whether they could just make it as like a balancing um, perspective inside the game. I'm not sure if that's already in the game. It's hard for me to, me to be able to tell just from this replay. But I think it could be it could be really fun inside World of Tanks that when your barrel gets like super hot, that you're now super inaccurate from a, agree, a, from a balancing agree. perspective. And oh God, is this hailstorm going to get me? Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's what happens when you're on the receiving end of the hailstorm. It's not so fun, is it? So the thunderclap for me, I think it's the most interesting of the three vehicles because you have to balance that heat with the magazine reload. I'm having a lot of fun. With I agree with him when he's talking about the balancing the heat and the reload. Um, those, if they're going to put them into the game, that's the type of mechanic I want to see. The games that I played in this, I'm kind of thinking it could fit into the random queue as well. And the final vehicle that Wargaming was showcasing is the Flak Mouse. And the Flak Mouse is possibly the most vanilla of the three vehicles. And that is because it has, uh, I think it's about 10 different rounds, or maybe it's like eight different rounds in the, the magazines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight rounds. And then you can fire them out in quick session. I think there's 0.2 seconds delay on on each gun, or maybe it's like 0.4 seconds delay on each gun, which actually means that you're firing five rounds every second. So, but also you can see that at long range, you can't be fully accurate. We did hit, it looks like about three of those shells, as each of the um, the average damage is 220. So it looks like I hit three shells on the hailstorm there, or maybe four shells and I low roll. But it's yeah, not bad. You... This, this type of gun is already in the game when you have that many shells. Uh, eight shells, I mean, any of the top tier light tanks and even some of the tier 8 light tanks uh, for the French. They started to get 8 rounds. Uh, I know there's a couple premiums that have 8 rounds or 7 rounds even. Um, so this I wouldn't have a problem with really at all. And I don't see many people having an issue with this type of gun. This vehicle it's already is there. kind of similar to an AMX 1357. Or go. I think a better example is if you play Steel Hunter, that it actually behaves quite a lot like the Arlequin. Okay, the Arlequin yeah, yeah, yeah. with the final that. machine gun has 10 rounds with one second, or it's actually half a second intra-clip reload off those shells. So you can fire all 10 rounds, I guess, within uh, four and a half seconds of the first shot. However, the Flak Mouse 
as I said, has 0.4 on each of its barrels, and it does actually have independent guns. So this is Wargaming testing out a mechanic of can they have two barrels inside the game, and how can it fire out with just one single mouse button, rather than like having a, a different mouse button for each barrel, or having a different key like in a double barrel tank to be able to release them at, at two times. Yeah. So I think that this is a very interesting mechanic that Wargaming have actually been able to implement very well for the very first time. We can see that this gun is actually still pretty accurate, well, even if you're going at full speed there. Like I said before, um, it's not I the I very first time. I think four shells out of the eight on the Thunderclap, which is not bad from an autoloader perspective. So the flak mouse is firing, as I said, 0.4 seconds delay on each of its barrels. So that means that if you're including both of them into the mix, that you're firing a shot every 0.2 seconds. So that's five rounds a second as you can go. It's like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, effectively Just not with, bad. with the barrels there. And I have to admit, the Flak Mouse was a bit of a dark horse. Apart from having kind of like this awful turret, I thought it was going to be the worst of the bunch. However, actually, this gun, I'd say it's probably the best of the bunch, at least at mid to long ranges. Look how much we've quickly managed to add up. When I was playing the Thunderclap, I did like 8,000 damage over the entire battle. Mm -hmm. When I was playing the Hailstorm, I think I did 6,000 damage over the entire battle. And while the Hailstorm can be very efficient in close quarters combat, and the Thunderclap... Um, it's kind of good at close range, but also fairly good at mid range. The Flak Mouse is by far the better tank for not just for the close range combat, but more or less for the uh, the rear combat. And look at that, I took 440 damage from the Thunderclap, but I actually ended up doing 1,200 damage to him. I believe because I hit every single of my shells. Yeah. So I'd say this gun is actually the easiest to use. It requires the, the least brain power. Uh, it's the easier one to use at long range. <laughs> Saying that people driving the most are dumb. Range as well. And I think <laughs> that uh, the sniping capacity on this tank, as long as you're actually able to pen your shells, is pretty wild. Like, look at that, the full auto, I only hit one out of eight. So if you're thinking these guns are going to be like the new OP that you just hold down the mouse button and you just trash everything, well, that is definitely not going to be the case. Yeah, no, it won't. So all in all, unless we're talking now about the hailstorm. Now I want to go on to my, my final point. And that is that earlier on this year, as I said, Wargaming trialed at least in a video, they showed in a video that they were trialing these mechanics. Now, I don't think that Wargaming would bother investing so much into just a fun mode, but maybe I'm wrong. I think that these tanks are actually Wargaming testing whether these mechanics would slip into World of Tanks. I can because, see that. Let's be honest, there's, there's not so many more ways they can try and make single shot guns work and so to have auto cannons True. would be an opportunity for them to have one or possibly two whole new tech trees you could have like a german tech tree an american light tank tech tree there's so many different things you could do or alternatively it's a good way for them to have either tier 8 or tier 9 premium tanks so they can make a good amount of money there. And that's my concern too is that they're gonna make a couple of auto tank out of machine gun tanks like this and then they're gonna make them completely premium or they're only going to release them in Christmas boxes. Or, you know what I mean? And Christmas boxes are already egregious. Like, it'll be interesting. I think there'll be a little bit of backlash, especially if that happens. That way. And so I... I have to then decide whether, A, it's worth having an opinion on, like, will these ruin the random cure of World of Tanks or not? I think it is worth having an opinion because I truly think that we're giving a planning to have these in the random queue. And at least from my experience so far and look we've got to wait for the overwhelming fire event to see again how the community feels i've had a lot of fun with these i think that they would fit quite well inside the game uh, like thematically and the whole feel of them i think that especially with the thunderclap i think it's actually quite a high skill in being able to use that gun mm. and i think that playing auto cannon tanks could end up being one of the most fun things that you can do inside the game as like a one-off dipping into it so sure. and just having something different to be able to play around with. And I, you know what, I, I personally, although I do get the premium tanks for free myself because I'm a community contributor, I would probably jump on the opportunity to be able to get an auto cannon premium just so that I can have I something like, a little bit different. I feel like Quickie B's graphics aren't quite maxed. ...inside the game. And <laughs> so, all in all, do I think flat cannons will destroy World of Tanks? No, not at all, especially if Wargaming can balance the parameters, which I have full faith that they will.
That's the problem. That's always the problem, isn't it? Is with the balancing. So, like, not to repeat myself, but like with the wheeled tanks again, um, when you take off a tire, it continues to go. Just like the new tanks with the uh, double tracks. They continue to drop. So, I know there was a huge, huge backlash for that wheel of tanks issue back in the day when it first came out. So my guess is that there's going to be a huge backlash for this as well. But also an overwhelming amount of, yes, we need something new brought into the game, right? So it'll definitely be interesting to see what happens. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments. And uh, like and subscribe if you like the video. If you didn't like the video, please let me know in the comments also. Um, and you guys have a really good day. You know how you feel about it.